But first, concussions are the most common brain injury in sports. Each and every year in the United States, about 300,000 sports and recreation-related traumatic brain injuries are reported. Experts at the Centers for Disease Control believe that thousands more go unreported. Joining us in the studio from Overlook Medical Center are Dr. Joseph Remsen, who's the co-founder of the Concussion Center and chief of the Department of Rehabilitation, and Jessica Viana, who is a certified athletic trainer. Thank you both for being with us. Oh, Thank you. What is a concussion, first off? Well, concussion is an injury to the brain. And that's the most important thing to remember. A lot of times, uh, family members, community members hear the word concussion, and they think it can be a relatively benign thing. It's only a concussion. So people must remember it's an injury to the brain, no different than a stroke that someone may have, no different than Parkinson's disease that affects the brain. It's a brain injury. Um, and the most, most beauty of concussions is most youngsters recover very nicely uh, but there's a small segment out there a tiny percent and this is why it's a major concern they can have uh, significant memory issues for example a students who become C students because their concentration and memory just never return to what they were youngsters have persistent headache and dizziness that can last weeks and months that affects them socially academically and sport wise so the most important thing to remember a concussion is a brain injury most people recover but not everybody what is the first line of treatment then if I'm a parent and my kid is on a football field and you see the solid hit to the head you know likely he had a concussion what's the first thing that I should be doing as a parent well the first thing you have to remember being a parent number one is that I think parents must remember concussions are not prevented by helmets. And that's one of the first things I want to put out there. A lot of parents think, well, if my son or daughter has a helmet on, that that will prevent a concussion. That's not the case. There's actually been no studies necessarily supporting it. Helmets prevent brain bleeds and skull fractures. So that's one thing I want to put out for parents. Second thing is, it's not always easy right away to notice when someone has a concussion. We have basic neurologic exams that people do. They look at reflexes. They look at pupils. They'll ask what month, year, and day it is those tests are usually normal as well. And so what the first thing you have to look at in a youngster when you look at them, do they look dazed? Do they look confused? So we look for any change in their underlying behavior. Now what happens is some of the youngsters can feel pretty good right away. And it can really take up to several days to note, up to 72 hours to note if actually someone has had one. So when parents are in the field, first thing they're gonna look for, one, does that youngster look dazed? Do they look confused? Uh, the other misconception is to have a concussion that you have to pass out or lose consciousness. 98% mm -hmm. of people who have had concussions have never lost consciousness. You don't have to lose consciousness to have a concussion. All right, so now the next question is what to do if you've been diagnosed with a concussion or my child uh, had that serious injury or even it didn't seem that serious at the time, but now we may have an injury. What do I do? Well, you need to be removed from any physical activity immediately. We have to manage it. You need to protect the brain. It's vulnerable at this point. The threshold to withstand even just movement, not just a second impact, which could lead to that second impact syndrome, can be very dangerous. So removal of any physical activity, even protecting them from siblings at home and, and horseplay, can be dangerous. You need to remove them and be evaluated by a physician who's trained in concussion management. Not everybody's up to date on the information because there isn't a lot of information. What we know is because of the thousands of patients we'll see this year and the experiences that we have. So you need to be managed appropriately and immediately. And you also need to shut down cognitively because that's going to aggravate those symptoms. I was going to ask that because as a kid growing up, I remember when I would play sports, if I got injured, whatever, the, the, the first thing your friends would say, well, don't fall asleep. Don't go to sleep. If you fall asleep, you could, uh, you'll could you die. You know, the, so if you, if you suspect you might have a concussion, is it safe to go to sleep? I mean, you know, what, what is, is it okay? Or, if, or should you just immediately just seek medical attention? Well, I mean, as long as, you know, you're not deteriorating significantly and more serious issues can be ruled out. Uh, not that a concussion isn't serious, but it, typically within the first few days, you'll see how life-threatening it may or may not be. So the whole falling asleep scenario is not necessarily uh, something that we avoid. In fact, fatigue is one of the symptoms mm -hmm. because the brain is injured, those neurons are not firing, and you feel more tired than you normally would doing regular things. So fatigue is inevitable, and, and essentially it's one of the best things that's going to help you recover the rest period. So. And 
you, well, it's okay to sleep. <laughs> then you have the flip side, you have the, the, um, the people who have the serious ski injuries who have brain bleeds and don't take advantage of getting to a hospital right away and some of those people have died so you do have to be very careful with a brain injury obviously yes here's an important thing there's a very different distinction between a brain bleed and a concussion and i think what often helps family members that we deal with is explain actually what the concussion is and why a brain bleeds different for example if one hits their head on the ground mm -hmm. What happens is if you think of an egg, you think of the yolk, you think of the shell. Think of the shell as being the skull. Think of the yolk as being the brain. If you grab it and shake it, you can feel the yolk move around. Head hits the ground, that's the same thing that happened. Mm -hmm. That places a little bit of a stretching force on the brain itself. And there may be a small segment of brain where those nerves have been impacted and stretched so they don't work very well. Those nerves that don't work very well, they're like short-circuited wiring. So any information you put through that short-circuited wiring can aggravate symptoms. It's like smoke coming out of the short-circuited wiring. So you'll see youngsters with headaches, difficulty with light, noise, concentration, and memory. And when we hear the term rest, what we don't want youngsters mentally to do is things which aggravate those symptoms, may increase headache and other symptoms, that tells us they're pushing through too much. That's like rubbing the cut that's there. They keep doing it, it takes longer to recover. And that's when you hear the treatments like stay in a dark room, uh, <laughs> rest, et cetera. Don't be running around. So because I've heard of some people being treated that way, right? Keeping the eyes shut, stay in the dark room for a day or two, et cetera. Absolutely. So what we'll tell youngsters from a cognitive standpoint, we don't care what they do mentally as long as they don't push through. The not jumping around is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. That's a physical sport activity, jumping and spinning and turning can shake the brain which can aggravate that area that's already been injured so we tell parents mentally we don't care what they do symptoms pop up we need the kids to stop exercise initially no brain bleeds a little bit different mm -hmm. it's not that stretching of the nerve necessarily it's actually a bleed in the brain and most of those kids don't have the light noise sensitivity it's a different type of injury we have only 30 seconds left i have to ask you what happens if there's you got 30 in 30 seconds i have a minor uh, concussion what do i do to, to kind of work my way through it once i'm beyond the dangerous point if you will uh well we need to make sure that you can handle full cognitive load at this time of the year it would be being in school hanging out with friends doing everything you normally would be without any increases of your symptoms any symptoms whatsoever if you can handle the mental and cognitive load then we can consider getting onto the physical load and we do that protectively by gradually increasing them through what's called an exertion protocol moving the head around a little bit increasing the head movement to make sure that cognitively they were okay and physically they can handle the movement and that's actually required in the state of New Jersey at all high school levels to put you through this exertion protocol to make sure that before you to go get hit again you can withstand that hit because ultimately we need to make sure that if they were to go back out onto their playing field or back to life if they were to get hit it's as if nothing happened in the first place they can withstand stand that impact again. Right. Dr. Remsen and Jessica Viana, thank you so much for being with us. Great information about concussions we all need to know. Appreciate Thanks for having it. us. Thank you.